I got your wig and yes, you're still mad. I got your wig and ha 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 ha. I got your wig and ha 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 ha. You're so upset and I could care less. Get out of my face. I got your wig and yes, you're still mad. Ooh, you're mad, bitch. Listen, 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 listen. Giselle is going through a lot right now, guys. Her dad is having surgery in the morning. I'm very sorry to hear that. Sorry. Sorry. Here's my thing about that. I can wish people and their loved ones well from a distance. Get her, get her, get her. Where's the ladies' room? Oh my god. Call the ambulance! What happened? How did that get like that? Deborah, do a drink on Candace. She do a drink on Candace, but she hit me in the head. What, what happened? I don't know. Deborah just, when I grabbed her, I picked, like, picked her up and she was like, um, one of Wendy's friends touched me. I didn't touch her. I need Candace. Excuse me. Yeah. Where is she? Where are I don't care. I'm not doing this no more. I'm pissed. This I know, girl I know. has no reason to touch that. I don't want to talk to her mom. She has, I, she I am her upset. Her. I know you are. But let's put her first. Like let's do that. Whole... I need to see yeah. her. Nearest me. hospital. Me... She's going to be all right. Get that raggedy bitch the out. You're fine. You're fine. Get that right. Sesame Street ass bitch. Right. are blaming Ashley for this mm -hmm. which I I don't know what she knew because people are saying that right. I'm not saying that she knew it it's just she invited her friend okay she yes. invited her friend but you and her friend, her friend. have issues yeah. and well so, she has issues so what okay. happened with the fight like how did this fight even start you know cameras were still we still got to hear some of what was going on we got to see some things some yeah uh, blows being thrown. I was yeah. like, who's that? Who's that? Who's in the dress? Who's... Yeah. So you were there. I was there. I I believe that she came there to jump me for and wanting to fight. And all because you call her Sesame Street. Yes. Is that the full reason? I, I don't know. Okay. I think so. But then she also, like, did videos where she was, like, posing with Elmo and embracing the... being called Sesame Street. So she walks over to me. Cameras go down. Security goes away. She waits for that comes over to me, gets right in my face, and says what you hear in the audio. Mm -hmm. Do we have a problem? Da, da 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 And there was more back and forth that was cut out. So I'm thinking, oh, my God, she's going to try to fight me. Mm -hmm. So natural inclination is I have to defend myself now. What can I use to defend myself? Because I'm standing in these, like, six-inch Valentino pumps. I'm not running. Right. I can't really, like, square up. So I grab what was close to me. It happened to be a bottle of champagne. If she had come at me, I don't know what would have happened. But, but I just trying to make I sure was you were prepared, prepared to defend myself. I'm chilling. Candace is here. She's gonna call me the help. And then out of nowhere, Kiana hits me in my face. And then I threw my. Was she punch you? Yeah, in my face. <laughs> Put your hands on me and think I'm not going to say anything hey, and I'm hey. not going to do anything. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh -uh. The girl, Deborah, threw a drink on Candace. She threw a drink on Candace. She threw a drink I, on Candace. I pushed her out the way, but that, I believe, I don't even know what happened. We were she, fighting, but you hit me in the head. If she goes to the hospital, I want to talk to her mom and let her know where she's at. Absolutely. Let's go. I'm with you. I got your, per I got your purse. I'm right here with you. It's K, okay? K, hey, don't look at it. Everybody calm the K is calmer. Come on. It's yeah. okay. I need to rinse my face off. Come here. Okay. Yeah, she she needs, she's getting ready to come out. No. She wants everybody. She wants everybody. All right. All right. I'm right here. 
So we're standing up. Next thing I know, Deborah, Sesame Street, or whatever. She takes a drink. She goes to hit cans. At that point, I'm like, like pushing her back because I see like she's a problem. She turns around, grabs a glass, hits me in my damn forehead. My face. Are you okay? <laughs> I know, but I know tensions between Deborah and Candace have been, on, you know, like bubbling for a long time. But what's the name jumped in it, though? So I she know. Stayed out of it. Deborah is my homegirl. She really has held me down and been supportive of me so much over these last couple of years. So even though we're not together romantically, because we talk about the kids all the time, it doesn't feel any different. What's that saying, like cheaper, cheaper to keep her? And I don't have Candace at the forefront of my mind when I think about Deborah. I feel like these are two grown women who they don't mesh, fine. The club is huge. There's no need for everyone to be feeling like pressure because so-and-so is here. I can be, and I have been, in a room with people that I don't mesh with all the time. I've said and repeatedly say, I don't condone fighting. I just don't do it. Like, we talk, we yell, we say things with our words. You know, my castmates and I have all gone toe to toe at some point in time. I've never ever thought to use my hands. I'm just not that way. So for the actions that happened that night, they are not in alignment with who I am. They are not in alignment with what I believe. And I could never have anticipated that that would happen. Um, I know a lot of people think otherwise, but yeah, I just don't get down like that. I don't roll with it. It's unfortunate that it happened that way, but you know, I can only deal with the aftermath and, uh, you know, that's, that's it. I'm an adult. You've never seen me put a hand on anybody, okay? I'll never spank my children, and I'll never put hands on anybody who doesn't touch me first. And that's just that. I, I saw you walking in. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you know, I broke it before. Yes. So it just re-injured. I mean, how did this happen? Sharice, what happened to your foot? <laughs> I was security, remember? <laughs> Candace had gotten into an argument with the girl. The girl threw a drink at her. Candace grabs a champagne bottle. So I grab the bottle, and then I'm holding on to her, and I'm, we're all over the place. And I'm like holding on to her like this, trying to, you know, keep her. Why don't you grab a bottle, though? That was her reaction when the girl threw the drink. She waits for that comes over to me, gets right in my face and says what you hear in the audio. Mm -hmm. Do we have a problem? Da, 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 da. And there was more back and forth that was cut out. So I'm thinking, oh my God, she's going to try to fight me. Mm -hmm. So natural inclination is I have to defend myself now. What can I use to defend myself? Somebody stomped on my toe or something because my freshly polished toes have like, you know, scuff on it. So I haven't been anywhere since. I, don't, I, don't I really can't answer it. How do you feel about the fact that what happened has left a stain on GNA, something that we've been working on for a very long time? It <laughs> angers me. I agree. I am thankful still that we had a great show. Yeah. What Deborah tells me is that while she was sitting there, she could hear Candace and Wendy talking about her. And so she got up and said, you're talking yeah, about my me. Face. She said she's a vermin, the hell. I'm going to get crazy. Okay. Okay. Get that right. Sesame Street ass no, bitch no, and no, don't come no, back. No, no, and don't come back. Why? Why, Grover? And don't come back, you f***ing cockroach ass bitch. Everyone involved in this situation was an adult, number one. So while they were my friends, I'm not taking ownership or responsibility for their behavior because I don't need to. Don't like what happened. And to see what happened to Kay was heartbreaking to me. A lot of people ask why I asked if the cameras were still rolling while we were filming, okay? And I want to say that 
the reason I asked that, sorry, I just got a WhatsApp from somebody. Sorry, got a little distracted. Okay. The reason I asked that is because when we're filming, we can only play cleared music. And our event, which first of all, major shout out to um, Zebby's Garden and Mayflower, which is a club in DC. They really hooked us up. They did everything they could for us. No one could have anticipated the events that transpired that night. The club is not at fault. Like, they were amazing. So the reason that I asked for the cameras to rolling is because when the cameras are up, we can only play cleared music. And I want to give props to Bravo and Truly Original Art Production Company because the music has gotten a lot better, okay? It used to be karaoke beats. Now we got some bops, okay? But still... People were like, hey, like, are we going to get some different music? Because our event went a little longer than anticipated. So we were like, okay, y'all. So I'm asking, can I tell the DJ to start playing some Java Like It's Hot music? That's what I wanted. Everybody wanted to clap some cheeks, you know? Which, oh gosh, let me take that back. That's not what I meant to say. But you know, everybody wanted to dance, okay? So that's why I asked that. That's Clear music is music that has been approved by uh, Bravo and Truly Original. Um... So that's it. Uh, that's the only reason I asked that. That's actually not a spoiler. It's not brought up at the reunion, so I can address that now. Um, but that is the reason that I asked, are the cameras still rolling? Because we wanted to play some different music. I had no other intentions aside from that. I've grown to really like Kay, and I care about Deborah as my friend. I don't really know what transpired before, because what she says is, you were talking about her or something, and you were calling her vermin or the help. <laughs> Candace had gotten into an argument with the girl. The girl threw a drink at her. Candace grabs a champagne bottle. So I grabbed the bottle. And then I'm holding on to her. And I'm, we're all over the place. And I'm like holding on to her like this, trying to, you know, keep her. Why did she grab from, a bottle, though? That was her reaction when the girl threw the drink. Clearly, your friend came with an agenda. A level of trust in this group, as I'm going to put it out there, has been destroyed. I feel this is a bigger message to a larger group of people who want to come up and f us up anytime they want, okay? That yeah. we can never allow in this circle to bring anyone around each of us that means, that means any us harm here. to us. Excited yeah. about therapy? No. Mm -hmm. You know we're going through a lot, right? All the financial issues and the businesses yeah. and stuff. Like this, I mean, Girl, focus. yes. <laughs> to say the least. Okay. I've been perfect, of course. Oh, ah, well, of course. Perfection of is impossible course. to achieve. So I know of that is false. Of course, he thinks he's so perfect. <laughs> Ooh, I hear some animosity. <laughs> so I guess we'll start with check-ins with the D word being thrown yeah. out. Before this whole crisis, mm -hmm. I had actually retained a lawyer to file for divorce. Where are you both now? What's the D word? Divorce? Divorce. Oh. You know, as far as the D word, that was never my consideration, so you got to ask her. <laughs> well, I, I agree and disagree because I've been asking, what did I do wrong? And the only thing that's been said is I wasn't listening. We did get to a point where I was ready to divorce you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, but I was well, ready I to I didn't know that, but okay. <laughs> you, but you did. Well, you didn't know that at the time, but you know that now. I didn't know that at the time until I saw the receipts from the lawyer that you had been talking to. Right? I, I think I said this in our session last time I was here with you. Mm -hmm. You know, I am committed to Gordon through thick and thin. And so when I seek counsel for a divorce, it was because I wanted to outweigh all of my options because I mm -hmm. felt like we were in a space where you were really difficult to like cohabitate with. There was a moment where you were very combative. You were combative with your kids. You were combative with our partners. You were combative with me. And I'm just like, I live well. I've lived my, my whole childhood, which I had no control over, was combative. I'm not living a, combat, in a combative life. Let us at the door. <sighs> Delivery? Okay, Nicole? thanks. Yep. Perfect. All right, we're good? Okay. All right, so are we going to um, talk about, like, how long am I going to have to sleep in Gigi's room? Like, are you going to head back to Charlotte? Like, what are you doing? I plan on going back around the 8th, 9th, 10th of November. 
Is that not soon enough for you? Because I'm here because you asked me to come and watch the kids because you have functions. It's up to you. If you want me to leave early and you got coverage for the kids, have at it. Let's talk about, like, longevity. I don't want to have to, like, sleep in Juju's room. You asked for this, so I don't think you thought this through well enough to think about all the unintended consequences. So this is one of them. I've known you've been having an affair for 10 years or longer. I know you had an affair just before we got married. I know there's going to be come, come a time when I probably won't be able to satisfy all your needs. I want you to know that I am okay with you finding what you need elsewhere. I only have two rules. One is, don't give me a reason to look for it. Secondly, keep the kids out of it. You tell me how it looks okay. a married woman he going to live with a single man I wasn't in a five-bedroom house. Bullshit. The I, kids he told wasn't me. even there half the time. I, he worked oh, in 17 me. different cities. They even told me you were sleeping with him when you said you weren't. Jeremiah no, said, Gordon, I saw mommy sleeping with Gordon. Mr. Ink. Could you mind telling us a little bit about your history? Okay, first he doesn't want to be called <laughs> We can start there. His name is Ink. How long were you guys in a relationship? I met Mia, uh, I knew Mia about, about what it was. Probably about three and a half, three and a half years. And then did y'all break up because the relationship got to be long distance? Yeah, that would, that would pretty much be it. Because for me, like I said, I wanted to further my career. And just for her, it didn't make sense for her to go backwards. So uh, we stayed in contact. And then, you know, she ended up getting married the first time. And then um, she ended up getting married again. Did you guys keep in touch while she had her first marriage? No. We always been very respectful. Mm -hmm. Like we always just kept in touch, like friendship. And then you know when social media came around, you follow each other on social media. What well, we had back then, like uh, when Twitter first came out, mm -hmm. you know maybe Twitter. Uh, what you had, Facebook. What's another? I'm trying to think of another one. MySpace. I can't. I don't think Mia ever had a MySpace, bro. And if she did, I hope I was in the top eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so take me back to you guys were in this relationship. Y'all moved to Charlotte together. Yes. Then you guys broke up. Yes. She got married. Yes. Um, then remarried, and she now is married still to Gordon. Yes. Right? True. Have you met Gordon? Yes. We've actually uh, hung out a few times. Y'all hung, hung out a few times while she and Gordon were married in a happy place? No. This is post-separation. Like, since they've been separated, mm -hmm. I've met him and had conversations with him and... We talked. I had a prostate cancer. My things, organs weren't working like they used to. On my 70th birthday, I said, you know, if you find someone that you think you want to start spending time with, I want you to know I'm okay with that. What really aggravates me through all of this is that I've given her permission. But yet she still chooses to sneak around, chooses to lie, chooses to continually change her story about what's going on and why she's leaving me and this, that, and the other, and actually not even telling me why. What she's told me, well, she's told me that this guy's her soulmate. I said, well, hey, you can have the best of both worlds. I've said you can see someone, just don't make it public. Be careful and don't involve the kids. Well, she still sneaks through, still sneaking around and thinking I didn't know. I mean. I see the phone records. I pay the phone bills. My name's on the account. I see. You were careless coming in at 2 o'clock in the morning. I look at the phone bill. You and he talking from the time you leave wherever to two minutes before you get home and get in the garage. Then you would take him around the kids. And I see the calls at 2 o'clock in the morning and the times when I'm away from home and all those kinds of things. Go to his house, have the kids there like you were trying to. Jer Juju asked me, Dad, why is mommy trying to replace you with Mr. Ink? So I knew what was going on, but you know, she she made the choice, I guess, to choose him over me. We're on the phone with you know who. So then I took your phone for two hours. Then you got mad and went off to Atlanta with. Yes, because you, well, you took my phone and, and locked me in a room. Okay? I said for two hours you can have a back, get some rest. Gordon, you're not my dad. Who does that? Um, let me finish. So, but the, here's the, no. Let's let's pause I'm out, there. Guys. Thank let's you. pause there. No. No, I'm let's out. pause there. You took my you phone, locked to me her. in a room. Gordon. Gordon. This is so unproductive. It's a waste of my time. You just can't help yourself. 
I think what happened is when she started making a lot of money in the show, felt like I had no access to capital. Do you soak it now? It's the time to leave. That Mia married me for my money and the, and the future that she thought I could provide. Yeah, I absolutely believe her leaving me now is tied to the fact that I don't have access to assets and my funds are limited at this point in time, that she now has access to funds. And this guy that she's seeing, she believes has access to funds. And I think she's leaving me for that reason. She's mentioned that they're going to be buying a house together and doing businesses together and other kinds of things together, which tells me that the interest is based on monetary gain from the relationship. So I absolutely believe that she's leaving me because she sees an upgrade. You've been, it's been lit for you right now. G tried to air out y'all business and stuff. How is that with y'all divorce? I try, he did. Say, there is a lot to unravel here today. Reunions are meant for hashing out the season. And I think while some friendships have healed and even grown, others have faltered. Now, I wanna set an intention for us today that as a group, each of you can find a path towards forgiveness and moving forward. Our set today is a gallery of all you iconic women inspired by your icon photo shoot. Rabiana, Tapiana, Strapiana, Dykiana. Rabiana, Miss Dyke, 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 Dyke. Get the strap, get, get the strap. Get the strap, get, get the strap. Get the strap, get, get the strap. She still wanna get strapped down tonight, tonight, tonight. Get the strap, get, get the strap. Get the strap, get, get the strap. Get the strap, get, get the strap. She still wanna get strapped down tonight, tonight, tonight. I got your wig, I got your wig, ho, ha, ha, you're mad, Miss Wickiana, Miss Wig, Miss Wig, Miss Wickiana, Miss Wig, Miss Wig, Miss Wig, you're mad, Miss Wig, ha, ha, Miss Wig, Miss Wig, Miss Wig. You wanna have fun? You wanna have fun? You better spend funds. Nani so banani, fly me to Milan. First class pussy, shit so bomb. I need a big dick, long like King Kong. A big, big tongue, the tongue, the ding dong. You wanna have fun? You wanna have fun? You wanna have fun? You better spend funds. You know, I have to say, I love this show. But as a fan, it was somewhat frustrating to watch this season. Like, I noticed the two of y'all, like, looking at each other, kind of, make like, smirking, like, making facial expressions surrounding the conversation about grace. You know for a fact the impact of calling somebody or somebody's family member a witch. What Your mom submitted my name to a shrine. It, can, okay. Robin. Candace. Let's not ignore the elephant in the room. I mean, there were some strong things said on the beach. It, and and you guys closed it out rather, honestly, roughly. So my question is, is there any hope that you guys could get back to progression in your relationship? Um. <sighs> hmm. What I've experienced, she thinks she did nothing wrong to me. And I feel like that when Candace is in the room, you're much quieter. I'm totally fine. There's really fine. nothing to I'm face. totally fine. Oh, I mean, there's... Or there okay, is here we go. 
she does not want to acknowledge me because she thinks that if she doesn't speak to me, then I will disappear. But my black ass is still sitting. Because the show, you know, is about finding common ground. And it's about taking ownership of actions as they affect others. Are any of you willing to say now that you feel prepared to do that tonight? As I have watched the show, it's Giselle, Giselle, Giselle. Giselle's an imp, Giselle's the devil, Giselle is evil. I wanted to talk to you really quickly. Yes. Um, in light of Chris had DM'd Ashley and... Um, there was a situation in which Chris made me feel completely uncomfortable. What I heard was very disturbing. A comfort zone that does not exist for you where Chris is concerned. And Correct. Chris thinks that you're more comfortable than you are. Correct. You mentioned that you all went into your dressing room, you and, my, and Chris. Yeah. And you were uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. I'm in a hotel room with a married man, mm -hmm. and it is his word against mine as to what's happening in this room. Giselle has a, a history, and there is a reputation there of her being fast um, in her past, and her being um, loose in her past. This, this is these are facts. I'm not making this up. Um, so you know, I see her flirting with Chris, and it's like, oh, po, po thing, just po thing. That's cute. It never You said po me. thing or poke thing? Po. Oh. P-O apostrophe. <laughs> po. Po thing. That's, it's, it's just, you, you can't, you can't ask for, for more from, from someone who can only give you less than half. Like, I, I can't, it never bothered me. So, he may be attracted, she's a beautiful woman. I'm attracted to Giselle. She's a beautiful woman. Like, I'm attracted she's, she's to Giselle. A beautiful woman. Giselle's gorgeous. Okay. Yes, I agree. L listen, she's beautiful, but a shell is a shell, okay? And shells often have funky insides, and that's one. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's unfortunate, but, you know, I never felt like... Candace is a fun girl. Like, you can go out with her, you can have fun, you can kiki. But then, like, to have, like, a real hardcore relationship with her and uh, and want, and for her to, for you to expect that she's going to be an adult, like, have adult conversations, I've just never gotten that from her. Mm. Looking back on the dance studio moment, do you wish you approached that whole Chris situation differently, knowing that it would eventually result in the kind of, like, demise of your friendship? I approached that situation. I thought about that. I, I approached it. I, I chose all my words carefully. I didn't add any like extra drama and hot sauce and tea to it, which I know how to do very well. And I didn't do that because we were friends. Now we're no longer friends. So I can real get to the, get to the tea and the nitty gritty of it all. And I, you know, and that's what the reunion is for. Okay. No one talks about relationships except for the fact that Giselle constantly attacks our husbands. So when you attack our husband, we return serve by saying, how can you attack us when we have no one in your life to even attack? Why would you bring a lie on this platform if you know it's a lie? Because why you're breathing you life into it by why bringing it up bring on the show. It? So that's why she is Giselle Lax Bryant, because <laughs> you can't attack somebody if you lack that thing that you're attacking in that other person. Her you point was specifically yeah. that you're putting something out there about her husband that's not true. Giselle is raggedy ass, nasty ass Giselle. Giselle should be fired. All true. So it's kind of like, um, I, I, I've answered your question about the death threats, but since we're here. Everyone up here, I believe, has received some form of a death threat. I think it is dangerous and extremely unfair to conflate me having an issue with her, with her then receiving death threats. Just want to say that No, no, no. But because, are you, um, let me ask you this. I just, the people who are tweeting just, this stuff to her, are you liking the tweets? It is no week different after week after than week. her it's going on her podcast mm. and talking about me. We talked about Candace and her husband one time, because it was too on many. the blog. Husband sending yeah. pictures of their private parts. Yes. Why do they entertain these thirsty women? Some of these guys are miserable. And joking and adding sauce to a lie, to a rumor. She said so a lot of So the screenshots things. are photoshopped? Candace, there are some rumors going on with your husband. 
Can you please set the record straight for us? Because the fans need to know. Well, do the fans need to know? Do the fans need to ask Giselle why she's in people's business instead of asking herself why we don't know anything about her? I think we need to do that. But I think the fans have put to rest the lies. And I will say this. The truth is always more interesting than fiction. I know that there were a lot of doubts within the group about his story at the start of the season. Who believes Juan's story? <laughs> no, but Andy, I don't think no it's for us. None no. of us believe but it. Robin but Robin believes it. Yeah, yeah. That's all that matters. That, matters. that was foolish. But, but we chose to move forward. We chose to get married. I wasn't expecting like the firestorm that came out of it. This this really feels like this is a protect Juan campaign. It's not. Listen. The woman in Canada, the story is crazy, right? Yes. He would not make up a crazy story. He would actually make up a better story. Juan was still communicating with her. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. He, he should not have been communicating with her. That's okay. the problem. So you're making him accountable for that. It, we dealt with it, right? Right. I found out. I was angry. I told him, get the f out. We worked through it. Although Juan was not smart in communicating with the female in Canada, He's not dumb enough to be anywhere in public being affectionate and physical with another woman. How do you feel about the other wives, you know, throwing some shade your way heading into this season? I, I mean, really nothing that they say is, is of importance to me. Um, I don't really, I, wh how am I being held accountable? Did I do something to them? Did I do something, did I commit a crime? Like, I'm just trying to, like, yes. what needs to be, what needs to be happening here? You know what I mean? What, I don't, I don't really understand. And so I, I think they're expecting something else. They're, they're expecting me to dance around and hide, you know, oh, I'm not talking about it. Oh, and, and that's the total opposite. Like, I'm in, in the season, I'm like, okay, it's in the, it's, you know, we're talking about it. It's in the news, it's in social media. We'll talk about it. I'm not hiding from anything. Right. Um, but just because I chose not to share something about my life that wasn't relevant at the time when we were filming season seven, that doesn't mean you're supposed to walk in front of a camera and then all of a sudden make up a storyline right. with my husband and say, hey, you remember when you did that to me? I'm really upset about it, even though we resolved it. Like, I can't, I can't live my relationship like that. I'm not doing that to my husband, to my best friend of over since 1996. I'm not doing that to him. You know what I mean? And it's our job okay. as her friends to support, to support her. her. Okay. Can I ask one little thing? Sure. It, when he said, like, Bree's like a beautiful woman, th did that bother you at all? No, because the point was, if he had been at the laundromat with someone who was not beautiful, it wouldn't have been an issue. I got it. Do you feel like he was supportive of you throughout filming? Yes, he showed up, he answered questions. He's not showing up tonight. That's oh, fine. He yeah. does not have a basketball game. No, oh. he doesn't. He declined to be here. Okay. Oh, Andy. That was shady. Well, so that, Andy. Doesn't, that doesn't well, mean that <laughs> he doesn't support me. Why is he not here, Rob? He doesn't know that you're going to be under fire not, tonight no. because of his actions. The no, least he can not, do as your husband no. is to stand behind you and say, baby, you don't have to take all the bullets. I can take some, too. What happened? How did that get like that? Deborah, do a drink on Candace. She do a drink on Candace, but she oh hit me in the head. Oh what what happened? Look, Ashley, you may try to gaslight the audience, but I cannot let you gaslight me. You and your forehead will not get away with this travesty that has happened on The Real Housewives of Potomac that has it turned into the love and hip hop of Potomac in this bitch with all these rumbles. Okay? This is supposed to be a show of elegance and class, and we are rumbling in the club. This is too much for me. But who did I blame? Miss Ashley Anna, the bitch who's playing victim, or not victim, but she's sitting there confused talking about what happened when she was standing right there. Girl, you were there. And I know some of you guys will be like, what the fuck, where's that clip at? Well, it's in the clip that I can't show due to violence and I, me not wanting my channel shut down. Okay, yes. But basically from the clip that I saw, Miss Ashley was there and she was there helping Miss Candiana not throw a bottle at Miss Deborah who threw a drink at her or tried to throw a drink on her. But Miss K. Anna, Miss Kiana, whatever, Miss K got in the middle and then started mushing Miss Deborah and they ended up on the floor. So that's what happened. And Miss Ashley is acting like she didn't know what happened when she was standing right the fuck there. Bitch, what girl? And on top of that, what the fuck did you think was going to happen when you invited this messy asshole who is known or, yeah, 
who you know has problems with two girls on the castmate or castmate. Girl, somebody fucking with my song. Look, let me start over. Why would you invite Miss Deborah when she has problems with your cast members and she has made up rumors on their husbands? I, I saw you walking in. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> you know I broke it before. Yes. So it just re-injured. I mean, how did this happen? Sharice, what happened to your foot? <laughs> I was security, remember? Why is Sharice in my face? A uh, C? This is your karma for being in my face. You got your foot stomped out in the midst of being in this motherfucking fight. That's what you get. No, I'm playing. I'm not wishing pain upon Miss Sharice. I just, again, am confused on why she's in my face every motherfucking week. And if bitches are getting fired, she better not get a motherfucking flute in replacement of bitches getting fired. And if bitches are getting fired, she must get fired too as a friend of or whatever her title is on this season. Queen of Annoyance. Grand Dame of Deviled Eggs. Grand Dame of a bitch who won't get out of my face. <sighs> so am I happy that she got her foot stumped on? Just a little bit. <laughs> is that right? No, I know. On the phone with you know who. So then I took your phone for two hours. Then you got mad and went off to Atlanta with Yes, because you, you took my phone and, and locked me in a room. Okay? I said for two hours you can have a back, get some rest. Gordon, you're not my dad. Come um, absolutely the fuck not, okay? I was on Gordon's side just a little bit, only when he was talking about the kids being involved into this situation of their affairs or whatever the fuck is going on, okay? Don't involve the children. But you locking your wife, your children's mother, in a room for two hours... It's not acceptable. That's very much P. Diddy behavior or R. Kelly behavior. You know that we don't have slaves nowadays in this bitch court. And what's going on? I don't know if you had a flashback back in the old days of slavery and so on. Not that you would have been a slave master, but I don't know if you just felt the need to invoke a slave master in this hoe. But you very much are being a slave master by locking your wife up in a room for two hours. And I'm not trying to play you, but you should have known what you got yourself into when you cheated on your last wife with this one by meeting her in a goddamn strip club in her ball gown. Now, I'm not playing strippers. I'm just saying that's where you met the wife that you cheated on your last wife with. And now look at all the antics that have come with. Ew. Like JK, but like maybe not. But thank you for watching. But you hating ass bitches always have something to say. Hating ass bitch, but you're still watching my vids. What? 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 <laughs> you're so upset. But that's like okay because have a piece of bread, have a Xanax, relax because I said what I said.